the shopping centre. Familiar territory for all of us and for the retailers themselves, one under constant evolution, particularly in the arena of employment legislation. One of the biggest changes to employment law this year is the Agency Workers' Regulations, which come into force on the 1st of October. The regulations will provide agency workers with basic working and employment conditions that are no less favourable than those of permanent employees. And it's not just retail, health, care homes, hospitality, manufacturing. It's estimated there are 1.3 million agency workers in the UK. I'm joined now by employment law expert Tom Bourne. Tom, how will these new rights compare with those for existing employees? Well, there are two sets of rights, really. The, the first arise on day one of an assignment, and those include equal access to a company's facilities, such as staff canteen, crash, transport services, and also the right to know about permanent job vacancies. The more significant set of rights only kick in after 12 weeks in an assignment, and those are things like equal pay, working time, holidays, and so on. Pregnant workers will also get equal rights in respect of health and safety and paid time off for antenatal appointments. We've discussed the regulations in broad terms, but getting into more detail now, Tom, the rights come into effect after 12 weeks. Now, how is that time frame calculated? Well, it's actually relatively complex, but I think it's easiest to get the gist by imagining a stopwatch that ticks from zero down to 12 when the worker gets their full suite of rights. It's worth remembering as well that these are calendar weeks, not working weeks. So the clock starts ticking on day one of the assignment. There are certain events that will cause the, the clock to reset. For example, if the worker leaves the company or if they uh, change assignments to something that's completely different, uh, or indeed if there is a pause of six weeks or more where they, for example, go away to another company and then return in the same role. Uh, other events will simply pause the clock, so annual leave, sickness leave or jury service will pause the clock and it'll carry on ticking when they return. In other cases, uh, such as pregnancy, childbirth and parental leave, the clock will actually keep ticking as before and keep going down towards 12. It's been reported that one in six companies plan to sack their temps after 11 weeks in order to avoid paying them the same rate as their permanent employees. Is it really going to be that easy to flout the new laws? Not at all, no. There are some very comprehensive anti-avoidance provisions in the regulations that are designed to prevent exactly that. Essentially, if it looks like an assignment is structured to get around the regulations, a worker could take a claim to the employment tribunal. If they're successful, uh, they will automatically be entitled to equal rights, as at the point they would have reached 12 weeks. Now, there may be some situations in which an employer will need to move workers around jobs, but they need to be very careful how they justify that, particularly as there's a fine of up to £5,000 for breach of the provisions. Now, the government reckons that the annual cost of this new law is going to be £1.5 billion. So how will employers look to lessen the impact? But well, I think the first point to make is that those employers who don't currently use large numbers of agency staff or who pay them the same or similar to permanent staff are unlikely to be greatly impacted by the regulations anyway. But for those employers who are, there are a number of options really. The first is that they could consider setting up their own uh, bank of temporary staff and that would fall outside the regulations. They could outsource work currently done by uh, agency workers. They could use zero-hours contracts or increase the availability of overtime to existing staff. There is also a specific get-out in the regulations known as the Swedish derogation. Um, what that means is that if the worker is directly employed by the agency and paid between the assignments, the employer won't have to pay them the same rate as permanent staff. I'm joined now by Brian Watson. Brian, as the head of a recruitment and employment agency, talk me through the impact that these new laws are going to have. I think that it's going to mean that we're going to have to work very closely with our clients to ensure that we legally implement all of the AWR and that we choose the right way of implementing it to match our clients. It will mean that uh, we have to monitor the 
agency workers so that at the end of the 12 week period that there is parity. From the employer's point of view, they now have to look at all their costs um, in order that they, that they continue to employ people profitably. And also that will then impact on the consumer at the end of the day because they might have to pass some of the costs on to them. So that's the agency perspective, Tom. How do you think employers are likely to react? So I've spoken to a number of employers and they all seem to be adopting a slightly different approach depending on their business needs. Some, for example, are taking a, a much less, less risk-based approach such as adopting the Swedish derogation. Others are perhaps taking a slightly riskier attitude and, uh, and seeing if they can structure the assignments to avoid the regulations. So what should employers be doing now? But I think the first thing they need to do is, is take a really good look at their permanent terms and conditions of employment, as well as their reliance on agency workers, just so they can get a feel for the impact the regulations are likely to have. But secondly, uh, I think they need to be talking to the agencies that supply them to, to get a feel for what uh, the agencies are thinking, you know, how they're likely to, to plan around this. I think they should also look at their terms of supply with the agencies to make sure that any liability arising out of breach of the regulations will be sensibly apportioned. I think really the message from us is that uh, as long as employers plan sensibly and really think through it, there shouldn't be too much negative impact. So with these key changes coming along, all employers will have to plan carefully and agencies too will have to be aware and implement changes to the way they work. This is not a good time to bring in a new law that will increase costs for employers, but employers will still be able to have a flexible workforce as long as they're prepared.